Hi, it's Dr. Brian Hebelin here with Lexington ENT and Allergy, and today I'm going to talk about ear infections. Now, we've done several videos in the past, both my partners and myself, about ear infections, but I wanted to kind of go into that in a, a little different angle or different detail. There are three main types of ear infections. There's an otitis externa, the common name for that is swimmer's ear, that's an infection in the outer part of the ear canal. Typically that's bacterial. We will occasionally see some fungal otitis externas. There is another type of ear infection called otitis media. That's an infection in the space under the eardrum. So it's in the space between the eardrum and the middle ear mucosa we call that, or there's an air space that should be there. So that space should be filled with air, but it can be filled with fluid or it can be filled with pus, and that's the case in otitis media. So, and then there's a third type of ear infection called viral labyrinthitis, or another name is vestibular neuronitis. So that's a type of infection deep within the cochlea or the vestibule, which is the balance portion of the inner ear, which causes dizziness. So it doesn't cause pain, it doesn't cause ear drainage, it really just causes a spinning type dizziness we call vertigo. So the symptoms of the outer ear or swimmer's ear, uh, otitis externa, is usually pain with movement of the ear, swelling of the ear. If the ear canal gets very swollen or there's drainage that fills the ear canal space up, it can cause a muffled hearing, but many times at the front end of that, people don't have any changes in hearing. They may see some drainage out of the ear, and that type of infection is best treated with antibiotic ear drops rather than any oral antibiotics. Otitis media, on the other hand, or an infectious otitis media, is when there's pus under the eardrum. That's best treated with oral antibiotics because drops can't get through the eardrum in order to get down to that area. So you need antibiotics by mouth that go through your whole bloodstream and get into the middle ear in that way. Otitis media often happens after someone's had a cold or an upper respiratory infection where the eustachian tube gets swollen and causes fluid to fill the space and then that gets infected. A viral labyrinthitis or vestibular neuronitis is when there is a virus that has caused an infection in the inner ear. And so that's beyond the area where we can see on an examination with an otoscope but it's something that we can clinically pick up on based on the symptoms. People will typically have a sudden onset of spinning type dizziness. It may or may not be associated with any hearing loss, but they typically don't have any ear pain with it. Those infections just kind of have to run their course. Sometimes oral steroids like prednisone can, can improve things or maybe improve the hearing loss so that will decrease the vertigo, but it typically has to just run its course and people will usually be uh, so pretty severely dizzy for several days and then the dizziness will gradually subside over the next week to two weeks to months. Uh, young people tend to recover a little faster from those events than do some older people. But anyway, I hope that clears up things because it's common misconception that uh, people get confused between all three of those types of ear infections. Another thing we hear all the time is people coming in dizzy and feel that it's related to fluid in their middle ear. They'll even get told by emergency room or primary care, do primary care doctors that there's fluid and that's what's causing the dizziness. But that's really not how the inner ear works. If there is some fluid in the middle ear space, it may cause a little bit of an off feeling, but not a really true spinning vertigo. So if you're having spinning vertigo, don't, don't uh, just continue to blame it on fluid in the ears. Have it checked out so we really know what the problem is. Hope that helps. If there's any further uh, issues or problems, please let us know here at Lexington ENT and Allergy. Thank you.